So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Distilled Spirits Council Ask the Experts webinar series. I'm Amy Carter. I'm the Vice President of Member Services and Business Development at Discus. Uh, we're the Distilled Spirits Council of the United States, uh, the leading voice and advocate for our members and the distilled spirits industry overall. While we're adding more participants to the webinar, um, I'm just going to keep going with some housekeeping. And then by the time we're done with housekeeping, hopefully uh, we'll have everybody in, in the session. So we are recording this webinar so that we'll, if, so that it will be available later. Um, and I also want to say we we open each webinar with our with a reminder of the discus antitrust policy. It's on your screen, but I'm also going to read it. Um, please just be mindful of the antitrust policy and refrain from discussing or exchanging information regarding um, pricing or marketing or sales plans. Uh, regarding costs or confidential plans about output or production. Um, do not talk about boycotting another company uh, or do not talk about re recruiting or hiring each other's employees or salaries or wages or benefits um, or any other competitively sensitive or proprietary business information. Um, so with that out of the way, happy Earth Day to everybody. Um, on this Earth Day, our topic is sustainable closures. Uh, can a stopper make a difference? And I want to welcome Rui Pedro Silva from Talis, which is a subsidiary of Cork Supply, as our speaker today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Delighted. And and Rui is, um, I guess, calling in or, or in in Portugal right now. So we were just talking about that. Um, so thank you so much for for staying a bit later in your day to to join us. Um, no problem. It's a pleasure. So Rui is a is an experienced sustainability and process engineer director um, working for Cork Supply, which is one of the wine industry's largest providers of cork stoppers. He's also working with its subsidiary Talus, which is a maker of bar tops for premium spirits. So just to set the stage a little bit there. And then also, I think, you know, just this is Earth Day. Um, so I just want to say a couple words about why sustainability is important to the distilled spirits industry um, and to Discus members. Uh, as an industry, you all probably know that distilled spirits is, is a large consumer of grains, and so we're always looking at ways to use um, spent grains, but we're also looking at ways to be more energy efficient. So in that regard, Discus partners with the Environmental Protection Agency's Energy Star um, Award Program to highlight the importance of energy efficiency within the spirits um, sector. And it was really cool that last November, November 2023, um, EPA announced the first ever Energy uh, Star certified distilleries, and three of those eight uh, distilleries are Discus members. So we're very excited about that. Um, but today we're going to focus on a different part of sustainability and the distilled spirits industry, and that is, you know, cork supply or corks or stoppers. Um, and so Rui and I will have a conversation for about 30 minutes, and then we'll open it up to questions. But if you have a question throughout the session, please feel free to ask it at any time. You can either use the raise your hand icon on the screen, top of your screen, which kind of looks like this, um, or put your questions in the chat. Um, and either myself or uh, Luis, who works with me, will will get them and, and read them out. Um, but with that, I think we've got folks in the folks in the, on the um, call. So let's just go ahead and get started. So first, Rui, um, maybe uh, Luis, go to the next slide. But Rui, tell us about um, Talus. I know people in the industry know about cork supply probably, but they may not be as familiar with Talus yet. So thank you for having me, Amy, again, and discuss. Uh, uh, to have the opportunity to talk a little bit about uh, cork and especially cork supply and Talus. So answer your question, Talus is a uh, part of cork supply. Maybe we can go to the next slide. Uh, and we are part of the, um, this larger group, this is Harvard One Group, so Cork Supply, Tonally Yo and Studio Labels. So we identify ourselves to be, um, um, to work with the wine and spirits industry to provide everything to the package of the wine and spirits except the bottle itself. So Cork Supply and Talos will provide the, the, the stopper and the tops. The Tolerio is a company that works in the US for barrels, and they have a subsidiary called the Creative Oak uh, that is an alternative to barrels. 
And Studio Labels is a label company that works specially in the um, in Australian markets. So we all part of the same group called Harvard Ones. In the beginning, it was Port Supply Group. Then when we start to expand our products, it makes sense to create uh, a different name and different head. Um, and then the name was, I think, uh, four years ago, we created the Harvard One Group. Um, and Talos is specialized in bar tops in the, in the spirits industry and fortified wines, of course. Okay, fantastic. Um, so that was, that was helpful because um, I, I know you all are, uh, Talos is a partner member of Discus. And so I knew about Cork Supply. And I knew there's a, there's a chain of a parent company, but I, I was that um, sort of overview of the entire group was, was helpful. Um, so Cork itself, uh, maybe Luis, if you can advance, I think one or two slides. Um, this is a little yeah. bit more about Talos, right? More about Talos, yeah. But we can go directly to Quark. Okay, so yeah, uh, Quark. So you know, we all know um, what it is, but tell us more about the. It's a raw material, right? So tell us more about it. Yes, it's um, fantastic raw material. Uh, it's uh, great, to, great to do this webinar on the Earth Day. Uh, and Quark itself is the, the outer bark of a Quark oak tree. We is not. Um, it's the wood. It's, it has some particularities, but it's, it's slightly different from regular wood because it has a high submarine content that gives us that need its unique uh, properties, the special elasticity and impermeability. Uh, impermeability. That's why it's used as a stopper. Um, so, Luis, if you can play the video, because it's really, really nice to show. Um, so, the cork oak forest is found in the Mediterranean region, uh, particularly in countries like Portugal and Spain. That's where cork supply and tan supplies is cork wood. Um, and just for these two countries, uh, mostly due to quality issues. Um, and uh, as you can see, we harvest the cork, we harvest the outer bark of the tree and we don't damage and cut down the tree in any way. So it's very um, manual labor. So we, this is high specialized uh, workers that manually, manually remove the, the outer bark and leave the tree to regenerate itself. And this makes the tree even getting better. It's like going to the gym. You know, when you go to the gym and you work out to be stronger, when you do this, the cork itself, the cork tree itself needs to regenerate itself. And when it generates it gets healthy. But uh, a tree um, can live up to 300 years producing corks every nine years because um, so the cork harvesting is legislated in Portugal and Spain. So you cannot harvest the tree more than a certain amount of cork wood from each tree to make, make sure that the tree is healthy. And we need to wait every nine years to remove uh, the outer bark. So if you don't damage the tree in any way, so it's pretty much you're looking at uh, natural, 100% renewal source of materials. So it's pretty unique, the cork uh, products. So actually, let me just ask a follow-up question on this. So in the video where the gentlemen were peeling off sort of like, I guess, the lower half of the tree. Yeah. Do, you, do they only remove a certain, I guess, part of the tree? They don't go up to a, they don't obviously remove all the bark on the tree. No, because that, that gets too much stress to the tree and the tree doesn't recover. Okay. So we need to, there's a certain amount of the cork wood that you can take out without uh, putting in risk the life of the tree. Um, so when I say that the, that the cork forest is legislated, even if the tree get, died, we need to, to get a permit to cut down the tree. It's really strict on this. We cannot harvest the tree in any way. So, but the amount of cork wood that you cannot take out of a tree is really regulated not to damage the tree. Okay. okay. As, as you can see, they take, they take the, the lower part and it was the same lower part that they took nine years before. So the, the higher wow. one just stays the same. Okay. So it's yeah. kind of like, and not not exactly similar to, but it, it's a sort of similar concept to the idea of pruning back a tree. So if you prune back a fruit tree um, to get rid of sort of growth in certain yeah. ways, um, the other, the rest of the tree becomes more becomes stronger. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. You can, you can say that. Yeah. I know that because I prune trees. <laughs> um, <laughs> so in terms of like uh, the long term. 
sustainability in terms of like sustainability challenges? How how does Cork Supply and Talus address those long term challenges? And and like, can you speak to maybe some day to day issues that you all might be addressing, as well as the sort of medium and longer term strategic decisions that um, that okay. that people that are using Cork or that distillers need to think about when you're when you're thinking about stoppers. Yeah, of course. Um, actually, since since uh, since our president front of company, um, sustainability has been in our DNA. So we are forest natural products. So his idea of being sustainable, being eco friendly, was always on his mind. Um, but uh, if you if I can summarize what means sustainability, core supply, and tell us his responsibilities. So we really get into it and say, okay, we need to be responsible if we're going to be sustainable. Um, so we are looking at sustainability, not an obligation. I don't know in US, I know, I'm gonna say, I don't know to be uh, nice, but I know that uh, in the Europe, legislations are very strict in terms of sustainability. So we need to adapt, but we are looking at not just an obligation, we are looking at as an opportunity to innovate, to grow and to create more value. Um, and to actually to structure our vision of sustainability, we create this agenda for the next, uh, I'll say, six years now, to the, the, the cycle until 2030, that we call it harvesting for the future, the 3P strategy. So harvesting for the future, for all the reasons, plus one. So we are a group, Harvard One group, we are harvesting cork, we work with the wine. So, and it is a 3P strategy because we build up a strategy on these three pillars and the three P's are product, planet and people. So it's really easy to communicate what you mean about sustainability or action plan is. So when we talk about product, we talk about how can we improve this wonderful and how can we respect this wonderful product that is Cork. So we know we and we believe that it is a very environmental friendly, very sustainable product, but we need to make sure that we're not damaged in any way. And of course, we're always looking for some new ways to improve our products. So they have all these action lists in product, um, looking at carbon footprints, uh, how we can improve our circularity in our products. So actions, KPIs and targets until the end of the decade. On the second P, the planet operations, and of course the supply chain, really easy. It's the one that everyone's understand when we talk about sustainability. Is the one like, let's look at the supply chain, see when we are, consuming energy, consuming products, when we are um, uh, created emissions uh, and how can we mitigate that emissions, how we can control our operations, like how can we change, how can we improve in our value chain to reduce, reduce energy, reduce product consumption and reduce emission. And of course, we also include here how we act along our, along our, our supply chain, how we act with our suppliers. It's very important for us in terms of sustainability to work with our suppliers and with our customers. We need to look in a very holistic way in all the value chain. And of course, in the last but not least, the, 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 three, the third P is people people and communities. We always try to offer a rewarding and challenging work environment. We need to ensure health and safety work conditions. We need to contribute to the communities where we operate. So Harvard One Group is all over the all over the world and we need to make a positive impact where we work. As if it, by creating direct jobs or indirect jobs or going beyond that and actually um, make an impact on the um, on the community, but if you ask me what you mean about sustainability, I'm going back to the beginning. Is responsibility is responsibility in taking the right decisions, but always having in mind the ESG part of sustainability, the environmental, the social, and the governance. It's not just choosing the best environmental solution and not using the, the best social and not the best governance. So it's a balance between the three pillars of sustainability, environmental, the social and the governance, but it's just being responsible. Yeah, I mean, that's, um, it, it sounds very simple, but it's very complicated because you know, when you're trying to balance all those things, and I imagine you must have to balance them across different um yes different areas so whether it's yeah. 
you're looking at the forest, whether looking at how you're treating people, whether you're looking at, and then if you go to, if you're in different countries that have different laws, so that's quite uh, quite complicated. Yeah, it's a full time um, job. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So, so what are some of the environmental benefits associated with like using cork as a material in, in enclosures? Uh, yeah, so we just talk about some, but uh, in a point of view of the raw material, cork is 100% natural, you've seen it, and is renewable, and you can reuse it, it can be recyclable, and is 100% biodegradable. It's, a, in, the, in the end of the day, is a piece of wood, right? So it's really in the bio uh, circle of life. So, and actually the cork oak harvesting is a very, very friendly process So, because the trees are not cutting down. Um, so, of course, everyone talks about, and everyone I talk about uh, sustainability is talking about carbon sequestration, and it's a huge advantage of using a, a forest product. Um, the carbon sink is estimated to be around uh, 3 to 15 tons of CO2 per hectare per year. This is around 73 tons of carbon dioxide per ton of cork produce. Uh, and the number doesn't say much, but it says that we need to make sure that the forest is uh, healthy. Um, and also the role of cork forest is not just the carbon sink, um, is widely recognized in other aspects, like for instance, the biodiversity. Uh, the cork oak landscapes have one of the highest levels of plants and animal biodiversity observed in the world. And this is very interesting. If you think about when you produce wine or when you produce intensive agriculture, it's a monoculture. It's not a cork harvest that is, we are actually increasing the biodiversity. And this is very uh, unique also is because this high biodiversity is not found when you are looking at virgin or untouched forests. But when you are looking at um, these mosaic-like landscapes that be influenced by people, that you are increasing biodiversity and you're increasing the animals and the plants there. So it's really unique because people just living around uh, the forest, the cork trees, are increasing the biodiversity and the ecosystem systems they are, they are there. And of course, because cork forests have unique characteristics, like for instance, they um, because they are fire resistance, they're really great against um, against um, fires um, and desertification, and because they are really deepened in the soil, they can they can work uh, soil against soil erosion. So, huh. using cork, you are promoting all of this is happening in the forest while using a product that is renewable and 100% natural. So so let me just highlight a couple of things you said. So biodiversity, so does that mean the, so the forest that's in the um on the slide and, and in your uh your backdrop there. Yeah. Those are are there other animals and then yes. other things like walking around in there? Yes, and we they have just... there are some invasion species also. We have like <laughs> this is a very lynx that only lives in the in the cork forest and uh, there are invasion species and the, uh, a, a, a large number of migratory birds that come and, and uh, live on this forest. The imperial, imperial eagle that is uh, really in danger, they live in the forest. But what really I really want to emphasize is that when people treat the forest, it increases the biodiversity, you know. Because there's no, there actually be, the competition comes uh, um, between the, um, the different species uh, becomes different because they, they are being managed by by people, and um, it's really interesting that you do not see that when in virgin uh, forests. Huh. Okay, interesting. I had no idea, and I didn't realize that um, cork was fire resistant, which is it is. Really fantastic. Um, again, 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 it, it, it can burn, but it's right. really because of this. Uh, when, you would, when you think about wood, you think about lignin and cellulose uh, and a little bit of suburban. When you think about cork, the, the suburban part is the bigger part. It's about 45% uh, of the chemical composition. That's why it's so different. OK. Um, so. This might be this is sort of like a maybe a follow on question to what we were just talking about. So how I mean, obviously, people obviously the industry can use more cork or continue to use cork. 
Um, but how else are there other ways that Cork can contribute to sustainable practices in the spirits industry and and maybe be part of the solution to combat um, or mitigate climate change? Like, like, like we're talking about is that you are promoting all of these uh, products. And again, it's a bio product. Now, if you think about the bio economy, uh, more and more the world is talking about choosing bio product instead of uh, fossil fuel products. So you are choosing a product that comes from the natural carbon cycle of the of the nature, right? Because you have the um, the trees that collect carbon from the atmosphere, they produce biomass, in this case it's cork, and then in the end the biomass returns to the atmosphere. This is a natural carbon cycle. Uh, and when we choose cork, is just choosing an eco-friendly closure option to bottles. So uh, you are not only is preserving the quality and the flavor of your spirit, because it's the most important in the end of the day, but you're also using a product that is biodegradable and sustainable. Um, all the carbon sink um, um, aspect of the forest, the CO2 mitigation to global warming effects. Uh, and by summarizing, the, the industry is when it works with the supply chain, and I really believe that the uh, industries and community can all be sustainable if we work collectively. So we need to work with each other on a, all the supply chain, and we can be the the supply chain for our, to the spirit industry as as well as we work with our suppliers because we just have we don't also have suppliers that are non cork or non raw materials. So we also always have to work collectively to to solve this big problem, right? Right. No, absolutely, absolutely. So shifting gears just a little bit, I mean, sort of a different aspect on the sustainability angle. So some of our members are looking at how to use spent grains. Obviously, the distilled spent distilled spirits use a lot of grains, uh, and there's after the use of the grain, they're just sort of leftovers. Uh, so we're looking at ways to, to use those more effectively, um, sort of in the idea of a circular economy. We've got a whole sustainability committee that um, is comprised of some of our member executives from our member companies who are focused on sustainability, and they're looking at okay, well, so what are there some of the best practices around spent grains? So in, in on the cork side of things, on the closure side of things, like how how does or how can um, cork products fit into the circular economy? This is one of the most curious thing. Again, I always say this is one of the most curious thing, but actually this is really curious because we use 100% of the cork wood because of the economic, economic value. Cork, it has a high value, so we can use everything. So we use every single piece of cork that we extract from the forest. So we produce natural corks, technical corks, even the waste, the dust, we generate energy, clean energy because it's biomass, to use and produce more corks. So actually close the cycle. There's virtually no waste in using cork wood. Um, everything creates its own value stream and we we use everything that the, that we extract from, from the forest. And again, and again, it's part of the bioeconomy, right? So um, even the biogenic carbon that is emitted by, by burning cork dust, for instance, creates a minimal or in most cases, no disruption in the natural carbon cycle. since most of the emissions are compensated by the, what happens in the forest. So it's a closed loop of products. So okay. again, is perfectly 100% circular. Right. And so you said earlier that um, cork itself is biodegradable. So once, you know, we once we're finished with our bottle and we're, we're done with the cork stopper and we throw it out, does that then decompose in? in... Yes. So okay. it, 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 it can't be used it's, again, right? The, okay, no. Like a cork can't be, you can't like recycle them into something else. You can recycle to something else, but oh. it is not a cork. But you okay. can do other, uh, other things. But again, cork is biodegraded because it's a natural product. Right. But again, you don't want it to be much biodegraded because you want it to be in the bottle. Because there are uh, right, some of cases of wine bottles with 100 years and the cork is there. It, it lasts. But again, is their decomposition is so slow, but it doesn't harm any way the environment because it doesn't okay. have any products you know 
but uh, uh, we we say that cork is, is built for life built for uh, it built by nature but it's built for lasting a, a long time okay got it got it got it so you can't actually you know take all your leftover corks and mash them up again and make new cork bottles Not new co- out of them. No. Th- that's that's because of the food and safety regulations but you can ah. do other, other other products. You can do other okay, products, right, no right. problem. But, yeah. But so the good thing is that cork, even if it sits in landfill, is not going to harm anything. No. And it will no. eventually um, decompose in hundreds of years after we're all gone, which is fantastic. Okay. Um, that's helpful. I've, I've, I've always wanted to know that because I collect cork uh, bottle stoppers for no good reason whatsoever. Um, but anyway. Um, yeah. So in terms of, is, are there any innovations in the in the sort of sustainable design, like in the pipe? Are there any innovations in the pipeline for sustainable design of yes, like, so closures? It, so uh, yeah, we always looking how to improve or how to decrease our environmental impact because we okay we are looking at this wonderful material, but we are creating. We are. Um, I use. I normally say if we are alive, we are polluting, right? We That's are. True, yeah. So, uh, so like, how can we mitigate all of this? So last year, Cork Talis and Cork Supply launched a new product called Bloom. Um, there was a new bar top capsule solution um, for spirits or fortified wines. That is a combination of a bio-based polymer and cork byproducts from our process. So we have customers that still prefer the top. They can prefer a plastic top. And we come up with this solution that is a bio-based polymer that we combine with um, cork. So it has 20% cork on it. So it's a more eco-friendly product. But um, for the next couple of years, we are working in a ways of biosourcing everything that is non-cork, um, a part of the bar top. Uh, imagine a plastic top or even the binders that we use. And ultimately, we, we try to develop uh, bar top, this is 100% natural. Uh, 100% natural, we already have solutions that is uh, bar top, this is a single piece bar top, but uh, we want to come up with an idea, maybe we can create a two piece bar top that is 100% natural. Um, this is one part. The other part that is really, uh, we have been str- we've been working on is on the package. You will want to work on a product, we want to reduce for the minimum possible the amount of packaging that we are using our products because we believe we are putting um, using this wonderful product and we kind of come up with a better and ecological way of um, transporting the product that give and deliver to our customers. First of all, the first, the first uh, idea is to reduce at minimal and then to change the product um, to a bio-based, uh, more sustainable packaging product. This is yeah, what yeah. we've been working on, Talis. Yeah, that, that's interesting. I wish we had um, thought to include maybe a picture of some of those, of, of either the Bloom product or or some of the other products you're talking about. But oh yeah, um, you, you you can you can look at our sustainability report in our website. Is um, and it's, it's all there. Okay, fantastic. Yeah, so if folks want to do that. Yeah. Um, you can go to the was it the Talis website or, or of course, supply, supply web. Yeah. Um, so we've talked about how great, you know, cork is, um, in terms of its, you know, on the forest and the biodiversity and the longevity of cork, but the, uh, low impact it has on the environment. Um, but maybe what are some of the challenges around using cork or what are some of the misconceptions around using cork and, and how, have, how have you all been addressing them? So the first misconception is that we cut down trees, right? So that is clear out. No cutting down trees. Cork is not running out because of the lack of trees. Um, but the, the other one that I really want to emphasize is that in the past, there were some concerns about cork shanks potentially impacting the the spirit, like changing the color due to color mm-hmm. migration from the shanks. And this is a problem that Talus are solved. So we develop a um, new kind of surface treatment um, that actually prevents the, the color migration. Especially if you use a microagro cork, you don't have don't kind of have any any this type of products. It's become 
in terms of quality in Thales, it has become the, the, the area that we are to have been investing the most. So I will, we believe that we solved this problem. Um, another another thing is that uh, we're gonna run out of court, right? It's, and that's not gonna happen in the next 300 years or so. Oh, that's good to know. I can stop saving my my cork tops. But I'm um, going back to so micro algo what or aglo what what exactly is that? Oh, sorry about that. Um, so we have two types of cork shank, so two types of cork. If wine is the same, so the first type is the natural cork or natural. We call it natural because it's a single piece. So imagine that you have st the strip of cork wood and you make a cylinder out of it, one piece. And the outer, the outer part, when you take the cylinder out, the outer part you can granulate and create molded corks with the same format, the same shape. And we call it micro agglomerated micro agglomerated corks. And why would you like, is it, is it just for environmental reasons that you would want to do that? Or what, why, what would be the difference between why someone would we're want gonna, to use? We, we're going to. It's two different options. Um, okay. Because we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we we want to value every every cork that we, every cork wood that we take out of the um, of the tree. So if you do just natural corks, there's a lot of waste. that a lot of cork wood that you're not using that. So let's value this uh, material. Uh, there's no area to produce uh, a full cork, but we can granule everything and we can mold it up to, again to be um, a cork to wine and to, and to spirits. It's another way of value our, our material. Okay, okay. Don't know, we don't wanna waste any, anything. Right, no, that, that's, that's good, that's good. Thank you for explaining that, I appreciate that. Um, we're gonna go no to problem. questions in a minute, so I just wanna give everyone the heads up. Again, if you wanna ask a question, use the raise your hand icon at the top of your screen, which kind of looks like this, um, or put your question in the chat. Um, so, so while we're waiting for folks to do that, I'm going to just follow up with maybe one last question. So, the cork forests, are, what are they facing, or what are what kind of risks or what kind of issues are they facing due to climate change? Yeah, yeah. Or are they? Facing yeah, climate change? of course. Yeah, it's pretty much the same as the other type of forests. Um, so we the increasing temperatures. The, um, the increasing frequency and intensity of droughts and wildfires and pests. Uh, so these have uh, um, an incredible risk on the on the health of the cork oak trees and have an impact on quality of cork wood. And of course, the amount produced is being registered that uh, we are. He has been. We lost about four percent of the forest in the last ten years. Um, but this is really. Also, due to the some lack of replantation and different deficient management, this is valid for Portugal. In Spain, it's not like this because uh, the Spanish government took some measures to replant and and treat the the forest in a different way. Um, so right now, there are some consortiums going on. There's some new legislations to recover what what we lost about the, the cork forest, uh, and we need to adapt need to adapt to this new type of climate so we need to, to change our forest management practice uh, to develop different strategies um, among all the stakeholders so cork supply doesn't own any forest but we feel the obligation the need to be close to the forest producers we need to work with them actually we being we are like another thing that most people don't know is just we just uh, the harvesting period is go from May to September, so three months is pretty much when the the, the tree is really uh, growing. You're talking about uh, and as uh, April, uh, sorry, uh, spring and summer. So if you take you try to take cork out in December and in January when it's cold, it just breaks. Um, so when it's growing is when you can take out. So in the rest of the year are. Uh, forest engineers, they just go to the forest, they talk to the producers, they advise the producer about the best practice uh, or manage the forest to keep the, the forest healthy. 
uh, and we are part of some consortiums to study the resilience of the of the Montago system. Uh, we just found one, a living lab system to increase the resilience of the Montago system. We need to adapt and the forest producers need to adapt because uh, the climate change actually affecting um, the well-being of the forest and they feel it because they felt they felt the amount of cork wood they extract every year is coming down so mm. everyone is trying to mitigate these problems oh interesting so it's a so cork trees are they they self-regenerate but they are obviously impacted by the climate yes. and other environmental forces which may affect their yeah. ability to regenerate if you think if you think about it uh, if you if you look up the tree, you see all the growth years, right? You you've seen a tree. It's, you have the yeah, growth years. You have mm -hmm. you, you have the same on cork. If you look at the cork uh, cork stopper, you can see the growth years. And if you get like two or three growth, two or three lines close together, the this is water stressed years because the tree gets less water, it grows less, and it gets stressed. And we're getting this more and more because the droughts uh, are getting. Um, more frequent and more, uh, more um, for, for long, longer periods. So there are some, there have been some efforts in uh, forest irrigation to help mitigation these problems. But again, we we cannot disrupt the system, right? Because if you are forced irrigation, you're going to get water for someone, someone else. So mm. we need to. It's a balance. Yes. Yeah. There are huge. Water is a huge issue across many different yes. industries, um, and a huge issue, you know, out west in the United States. Uh, I was particularly between some of the countries, some of the U.S. states that have mountains and have a lot of snow melt, and whether or not that snow melt gets down to um, other states, you know, carried through rivers naturally and all that. Um, huge issue there. Um, well, this has been super, I, I've, I've learned a lot. So thank you so much, Rui. Um, thank you. I want to stop and see if we have any questions from anybody. Uh, let me just check the chat really quickly. I don't think I see any questions in the chat, but if anybody has a question, you can put it out. Someone's got their hand raised. So uh, Andrew Clark, go ahead. Andrew, you should be able to unmute yourself and ask your question. Andrew, if you're talking, you're probably on mute. Oh, okay. So someone's typing a question now. Also, just give us a second here. Uh, what is the typical shelf life of corks? So uh, we we re recommend uh, okay if you if you talk about shelf life before bottling or after bottling. Uh, before bottling, we recommend uh, up to a half a year because of the surface treatment, not because of the any any problems with the corks. Uh, after bottling, again, you have bottles that go up to uh, decades in the bottles. So, uh, if the wine the wine or spirits is well conserved, there's no issue with that. Um, I think we've got some of. So actually, well, while this other person is typing um, a question, let me ask you this. So I just learned um, about there's this, I guess, new type of apparatus where it, I guess, puts a little hole in the cork. Um, so that, that you don't have to uncork your wine. You, there's a, I don't know what it's called. It's a, it's a wine opener, but it doesn't actually uncork your wine. It puts a little, I guess, pinprick in it so you can pour through. And, and you can pour it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that, is that used? Do, do you know if that's used with corks or is that... Uh, yeah, you can use it. I prefer I prefer to remove the cork, but uh, you can you can use it. But it doesn't because, hurt the cork clearly. Yeah, you okay. you need to you need to yeah okay. to punch the cork. Yeah, yeah. I've um I was speaking with somebody and they and they use it for champagne when they don't want to open the entire bottle of champagne. They just want a glass. They'll use they just, that. Yeah, that whatever I forget what it's called. The tool. Um, I wrote it down somewhere. Um, and I see that some folks are still typing in questions, so give them a little bit of time here. Um, ah, here we go. Let's see, it won't unmute. So what is the difference between Talus and some competitors like Amarin? Also, does the cork flake off into the spirit? How do you prevent this? 
So, because we are talking about sustainability, I'm not uh, sure if we. So, if you want to talk about the competitors, you can talk with the commercial yeah. guy. I'm not. I'm not. The yeah, commercial I don't know. Guy, that, you know? I don't know that we want to get into the commercial differences between no. either yeah. um, either producer of of, of cork stoppers. Yeah. Um, so, you both are using cork, and so that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as long as as long as you choose for uh, as long as you just choose a, a, a cork, you are doing the right choice in terms of sustainability. Right. Um, in terms of like the other question, part of that question was how does the cork or also does the cork flake off into the spirit? How do you prevent this? It shouldn't flake off to the spirit. It should the cork be? Uh, uh, I believe if you use a micro agglomerated cork, you don't don't gonna have this problem. If you use a natural cork, you probably can happen you're using natural and natural products but it, it, it shouldn't happen right uh, and it's not often to to find uh, some this kind of uh, of issues uh, on the um, on the bottle but it, it can happen it's a natural product and we are not we are we don't want it but it can happen but um would that maybe maybe if if the cork dries out would it flake into the bottle I've never seen it. I don't, I don't, no, no, I don't believe that. Is uh, it could happen? I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. You see, you should you should look at it like a specific case and look at it because there's a lot of variables on it. Uh, cork is always the the bad guy, you know. Is always uh, the one that's causing problems. But you have bottling issues. You have uh, temperature of bottling, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, hmm. Spirits, it's not like that. But when you talk about wine, it's a lot of, a lot of uh, variables on it. Yeah. Um, so there's another question. Synthetic cork was recommended to me instead of natural cork because it tends to disintegrate over time and flake into the spirit. What are your thoughts on this? So another similar question. I don't about agree. The flaking. You yeah, what? I don't agree. I, I don't agree. Why? Would you not agree? Okay. No, because if I have I have uh, bottles of uh, whiskey in my house that uh, go on for 50 years, six years with a cork, and it has no problem on it. So. Uh, uh, it depends. Actually, depends on the use of it. If uh, usually you don't lay down a, a, a bottle of spirits, right? It's standing up. Right. Um, if you're using it and you drink it, I don't agree on that. Hmm. I wonder. Um, the person who's asking this question about the uh, disintegration over time, if if they've run into that issue. Um. Because earlier, you know, we were talking about, you know, court can last for 300 years. <laughs> so um, I, I wonder if there was just some, you know, random issue with that particular cork or something. Um, this The person is typing, I think, additional comments or questions or maybe expl explanations. So we'll give but, it. But then, but maybe, maybe we could see it. Maybe we, uh, uh. yeah. It's so this person says point. they've seen they've seen cork. I guess that's natural cork break apart over time. Um, yeah. But you were saying earlier that you know it may or may not be the cork. It could be how it was bottled. It could be whatever. And, and again, it's a natural product. It has some variability. Um, but if the cork is treated well, is uh, well produced, it, it, I believe you don't have any any issues with that. You could you could use it, no problem. So what would be a cork being treated well is it keeping it at a certain temperature at a certain humidity um no, after you know, bottling yeah again you usually when you talk about spirits you're gonna leave the bottle just straight up right right um but like maybe don't put it above your oven or you know don't... if most of the time the cork is not in contact with the spirit right it's right. just i'm saying is when you transport the bottles and and thing that gets wet uh, after it gets in the shelf it's upside down it's just you just use it the cork is prepared to uh, to be in a bottle for a long time and okay. to be used and reused all over the time all over the the, the years and okay. one thing one thing that corks have that synthetic corks doesn't have i don't want to go into that but i want to i don't want to be compare anything is that we have hundreds of years of history and knowledge and synthetic, synthetic corks doesn't have that so if you really want to be sustainable why choose a fossil uh, based product and um, instead of a natural renewable product but i don't want to i don't want to go yeah. into that conversation no but that's but that's and that, that's and that's and that's you know talus's 
you know, people, purpose. I forgot the last one. Yes. People, so that's, that's your, and, your, your yeah. philosophy, which is, which is yeah. fantastic. Um, that's right. So, yeah, you're not saying it should be everybody's, but it's, it's your philosophy. So that's great. Um, okay. So I think, and I think that helped the person out. So they said, thank you very much. It was very helpful. So I think we're good there. Um, were there any other questions from anybody? No. I think that was, I think that was super helpful. I like the question about the flaking off because I learned something from that question. So I didn't know. So I appreciate that. Um, well, thank you, Rui. I, I appreciate it. Lots thank of you. good information. It was, I was helpful. I remember we talked about this before that uh, I had heard years ago that, um, you know, corks, cork stoppers were going to go away because all the trees were going to be cut down or whatever. So it's good to know that um, they've got some, no. they'll, out, they'll outlive all of us here on this call. They um, will, they will, they yeah. will. People used to say when you plant a cork, a cork uh, tree, you are doing insurance for your grandson. Ah, well, let me because ask you this. Takes... So you had mentioned, um, so are, 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 are there, is Portugal planting more cork trees for the future or? Yes, that... the, the, there are some re reforestation actions mm -hmm. right now. Uh, one thing that I didn't say is when a tree starts to grow, uh, you go up to 300 years, but the first time that you can take out cork to produce cork, the tree is almost 50 years, five zero. Oh, so it okay. takes that long to produce cork. So if you want to start a cork tree uh, forest, you can start it, but it's for your grandchildren to your grandchildren. Uh, start. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Well, that's, that's, yeah. not, that's not a bad thing then. Um, okay, yeah. well, so before we close, I just want to remind everyone of some upcoming Discus um, resources. Today, Discus Academy is launching our new sustainability certificate program, um, which was specifically designed for spirits industry professionals, although others are more than welcome to, to sign up for the program. Um, the program will educate uh, students on energy, waste, water, greenhouse emissions, raw materials, I'm assuming including cork, uh, solar wind, geothermal, green hydrogen, which I've never heard of, um, electrical vehicles, which I'm not sure where that fits into the spirits industry, but I'll be interested to hear about that, byproducts, um, which which would be great, recycling, et cetera. Um, and participants will specifically, the, the courses are designed so the participants will gain practical strategies and tools and insights to so they can really initiate positive transformation within their own organizations and maybe drive environmental responsibility um, and just sort of elevate sustainability practices within the within the industry. So um, if you want more information on the new sustainability um, certificate program that we're launching today, email education at distilledspirits.org to learn more, or you can always email membership at distilledspirits.org and we'll get you to our colleagues. Um, our next webinar in this Ask the Experts webinar series is May 14th, um, 12 to 1 p.m. And we're gonna be looking at consumer trends and beverage alcohol, sort of what's ahead for the summer and the rest of um, the second half of 2024. Uh, so that should be an interesting one. Well, that um, invitation will go out in the next week or so, maybe it's this week. Um, and then we're also releasing, I think I mentioned this last time, but we're releasing a barrel handling guide. So if you or anyone that you know is interested in best practices around handling barrels, um, please email membership at distilledspirits.org and we can tell you how to get a copy of that. With that, thanks everyone for joining us today. This concludes our webinar and everyone can disconnect. And thank you, Rui, again. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me.